now that I've told everyone that I'm better than them, I'm going to tell you about my guest. Might as well bring him straight in. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the second most famous Dobson. He is a rugby guru. His father was a rugby guru. All I can imagine is that anybody with the surname Dobson anywhere, everywhere that's ever lived is a rugby guru. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Stormers, the one and only, John Dobson. <laughs> Definitely the best introduction I've ever heard. <laughs> I was ready to fight. <laughs> Mr. Dobson, how are you? Licking yourself, Ubelele. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Listen, John, I was telling you before this is great Wi-Fi because we've had some guests on and I've been like, what world are you living in with that internet? Just great Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I want to thank you for that. Okay. It's a very old house. So there's a thick walls. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, as the old saying goes, old house, great Wi-Fi. I'm sure you know the saying, <laughs> Aristotle. But anyway. Let, let's not get into it too much. I don't want to, I don't want to bore you with my intelligence because I'm seeing all your books. I'm trying to impress you with how smart I am. Uh, yeah. You had James Dalton on last night. So. <laughs> <It's very similar. laughs> I, I, <laughs> there's only one bullet. There's only one bullet. Hey, yeah, yeah. listen, coach. I'm luckily, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's one only the one universe. <laughs> hey, listen. One, one bullet a universe, they've been saying. One bullet a universe. Coach, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, and thank you so much for um, for joining us. And I know before this, uh, I gave the coach a call, and he said, oh, sorry, I'm going to have to call you back. You were on the line with some – I don't know what his name is. It was some Rusty Erasmus guy. I was so offended that you, you put me on hold for that guy. <laughs> like he's yeah, a world champion. But, Coach, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unbelievable. But, Coach, I appreciate you. Listen, coach, I want to I want to just get straight into it. Um, tell me, I want to talk about let me start with your old man. Has has rugby been always like something where it was almost like no option for you? Or was he kind of like, do your old thing and we can get into who your father is? No, look, I grew up. I grew up pretty much at Newlands. You know, my dad, I, I think I said to you on the phone earlier, my dad was one, probably one of the few last guys who was at that 1949 test, which is the first one in Newlands in 12 years since before the Second World War. I don't think he's missed a game since the uh, yeah since then. So what's that? Seventy-one years. So no, I didn't really have much choice into in, in it, but it was fun. <laughs> so it was it was always rugby or death. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, um, he, he, he kept wondering. I remember when I was like twelve, he said he wondered his life after rugby. He remember him so amusing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it stayed with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, We're, and I, I bet the Stormers are so, so glad. Look, let's talk about the current situation because it would be tone deaf to ignore the fact that, 100%. you know, I was a low level sportsman myself and I know how much of a routine I got into in school and uh, a little bit after school when I tried to take sports seriously for about five minutes is that sportsmen, a lot of people don't realize, is are creatures of habit, right? All they know is physios going, you drink this, take this, bench this many, be here this time, be on the bus this time. That is your life if you're that talented from about 15, 16. Now without rugby, as a leader of a, of a team, what are you experiencing? Are guys anxious? Are you seeing what's happening with our rugby players as people? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great question and it's probably the most poignant one at the moment. Yeah, the first three week and then the two week extension, fine. You know, it's just a weird situation and uh, we'll get back on. But since then, I've seen a dramatic fall off in the, you know, in the interest, in the, in the sort of interactions amongst themselves, um, the anxiety. You know, we've got a, we've got a team like a team psychologist, and we've got an external sort of therapist that the guy wants to stay very private, and both of them are getting busier and busier, which is a pretty simple yardstick about the anxiety levels growing in the group. And I think on on two fronts, one of which you say, the, you know, the tangible day to day stuff, because a lot of these guys. From when they're 16, they know when they're flying, when they're landing, as you say, what they're eating. They haven't really had to make decisions. They haven't had to fend for themselves in some, you know, the first contract was when they, out of Crane Week or whatever. So there's that sort of, there's the routine and there's the sort of just the day-to-day -day element. And the other thing is, I suppose, like an Olympic athlete who's got it even harder, has been working four years to row, you know, in the Olympics, and that gets taken away. Their meaning's taken away. You know, there's, there is no job. I and mean, then they can't do anything else. They... Um, 
they're conditioned to fight the gladiators. Well, they are the modern day gladiators, you know, and that, um, so I think, you know, it, it really has been quite sad to see and I appreciate when I, you know, probably the whole of this conversation, the whole of this show, it's in context of what's going on in a society that's beyond, uh, you know, and a much bigger, but we are, we do have a topic that we need to need to address. And I've just seen it fall away. You know, I think, um, Milady, you mentioned Sia earlier. I think, you know, I, I wasn't a part of the World Cup and I thought he led well and everything. I think he, what he's led, how he's led the sort of country over this last, you know, this period has been stellar, absolutely stellar. Mm. Uh, but he's, you know, he's a certain genre and profile and everything. Like that. I think the average rugby player is really struggling at the moment. Yeah, yeah obviously, pay cuts also, but just the, in them, the whole meaning and as you said, the whole routines are finished. It's very difficult for people on the outside to ever understand because, you know, these guys are the 1% of the 1%. Not only have they won a genetic lottery, but they have, like, they've almost killed themselves to get where they are. You know, very few people know the type of sacrifice you have to get to this type of space. And I think, Coach, something I'd, I'd love to hear your take on, you know, winning is an ugly business. And you know, winning takes grind. It takes absolute grind. And these guys are willing to do it day in, day out because they've probably had to fight off, I mean, maybe 15, 20 other rugby players to be a stormer. You know, so when you take away that, like you said, the will to get up and go and win, that can't be easy. That cannot be easy for people that are programmed to, it's me against you, like you said, gladiators, is their job is to win. How, how do you feel that yeah. in normal life? I, I, uh, well, I, I can't answer. I think you've hit it, hit it spot on. There's the physical element, the genetic lottery. And the other thing is, you know, and Vody knows that these guys are going to go in and in every, probably, in a, you know, we had six, we had five, we had six guys, six World Cup Springboks who got catastrophically injured in our first six games. You know, Kitsov, Giant Cheese, Numbi, Sia. And um, so, you, you know, each game, if you do doing they run on the field knowing that one seventh, maybe 15% of that team will do a horrible injury. You know, that's going to require a surgery or being out for three months. They still better go and put their bodies on the line in this quest, as you say, mm. to go and win. So there's something, there's, there's a different wiring up there to you or me. You know what I mean? That you know your day is going to come down to Saturday afternoon where you can tear every single ligament in your knee and you're going to get started the rehab of that and you're going to do it. And you're going to go out there and do everything you can. And you know that... You can't cheat or creep or walk for that much. It's something freakish. So it isn't, you know, I think what you're alluding to, Mille, which is the same thing, it's not quite the same as a normal person not going to work. In fact, it's very different. Right? And I do worry about it. I mean, I, I do worry about a lot of their well-being. Sure. And I think that's very real. Sometimes we forget that, that they are human beings. They are supernatural in terms of the physical yeah. being, but they're still human beings who want their worth. A lot of their worth is within their physical ability and their showmanship. That becomes a part of their identity. And I hope we can get back as soon as possible. You touched on Sio yeah, Colisi. Go sorry, ahead, coach. One more thing on, that, on that subject, you know, you probably think that, that you know, the, probably the people, the public or me, if I wasn't coaching, think, oh, they're bloody lucky. You know, they get a free car. They live a great life. They stay in this hotel and they get the adulation of, 20 or 30 or 40,000 people and all this stuff. But I think if, you know, if you were the guy working at Shell Oil, I think, oh, he, that, you know, uh, Stephen Kitzoff's so lucky. I think you put the guy from Shell Oil into Stephen Kitzoff boots for 20 minutes. That guy will want to get back to Shell very quickly, you know, <laughs> and how they play. So I, 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 you are spot on in, in raising this as an issue. Yeah, look, I, for me, I, I've got no time for anybody who says sportsmen are lucky. I, as I said, I played a little bit of sport overseas for a while and I enjoyed it. Let's just enjoy. I used to enjoy a cocktail every now and then instead of going to practice. Yeah, a cocktail. Me too. They, they, they said, uh, James Dalton, I never thought I'd say this out loud, but James Dalton taught me a crazy lesson yesterday, which I will take with me for the rest of my life. He said, I wasn't difficult. I was just misunderstood. And I thought that was a wonderful message from the bullet himself. So we touched on Sia just now, coach. Yeah. <laughs> what is it about him? Because at first, I guess, you, you know, there's always these things of, oh, maybe he's just the media are hyping him. But I mean, you can only pretend for so long. You know, you, you can't pretend for as long as Sia has been pretending. There's clearly something about him. What is it about him that is he the type of leader who draws people to him? What's his leadership style? And what what makes him this guy that, you know, corporate companies don't just go to anybody. What is it about this guy? He, he's got this. I, I hate to put this on him, but he's got like a Madiba kind of aura. What is it about this guy? 
again, you've, you've nailed it. I mean, he came to my house last night because um, to, for us to have a sort of finding each other again chat because, you know, he got injured in the first game. So I actually haven't worked with him that much, you know, obviously this season, barely, you know, a couple of weeks in pre or a few months in pre-season. And then, uh, and we stayed in touch, obviously, but we came and we had a sort of heart to heart and uh, uh, last night for a good few hours, you know, and um, I think, you know, I, I, and I thought, you know, I wasn't party to the World Cup, like I said, and I thought, yeah, maybe you know, things went really well for the Springboks, some things worked out, you know, Carl Sinclair got concussed at uh, Sia was representing a nation and, and we knew the backstory to that and I thought, gee, but it's, it's nice, it's great, it's a great story, full stop. But just we're seeing what he's done and, uh, as I said, over lockdown, but even before that, um, when he hugs you or comes into a room or bends over with his laughter, like you said, the Madiba esque it just lights up the whole room and you just feel the warmth welling up in a room. Now, I'll give you a very small example which comes from today. Today uh, being Youth Day, which sounds like a very nice... Um, it's a very nice meta, not meta, uh, what you've seen, something nicer way of saying what the terrible things that happened on this day um, sure. uh, 44 years ago. But um, it's his birthday, and his birthday, and he's a popular figure everywhere, so it's an absolutely chaotic day. One of the girls who works in our laundry um, died of cancer this morning, and, um, you know, we sit on the players' group, you know, we're going to raise money for it's Chrissy's funeral and everything like that. And I get a call from Kelly, and you can hear he's in the middle of chaos. He's got a million children there and family, and it's his birthday and everybody wants a piece of him all the time. And he did, he was emotional saying, you know, we will pay for her funeral and I will feed her and her, well, not her, sorry, for obvious reasons, her family for the foreseeable future, you know, and um, the amount of, it just goes to the, sh it's just the sheer humanity of the man. And I think that's how he earns the respect of his peers. And he's just, you know, I must admit, the more I get to know and the more I work with, you know, sometimes you have relationships, Ask for you go the other way. Yeah, the more you get to know somebody, mm. yeah, the more <laughs> this, just, this just goes. The other, you know, the more I get to know him, the depth and everything. He speaks very well, but we were actually telling him. I was saying to him last night. You know, you don't have to speak so much. It's just who you are, and you know, it's, and it's just means so much to the team. You know, so, and to and to society, and the way he's adopted this role because it cannot be easy. You know, I mean, I'm not sick. I'm far removed from Sir Khaleesi. I get five requests a week from and from good causes you know a literacy society a um sure. people running a feeding team in Massa Pamela, can you speak to Sia or this guy running a scholarship program can you ask Sia to come speak to these young entrepreneurs to come and donate money and I don't know how he manages it you know so I think we're looking at really one of the icons of our generation potentially you know yeah he's phenomenal because his Instagram photos are constantly like Rachel's like on that he's he's managing that as well it's like it's like living on a fashion shoot <laughs> And then he still comes and manages to, to run the country. Ph phenomenal. So, uh, Coach, I want to move on to something else, which I find very, very interesting. So we find ourselves in a space where, okay, we don't have rugby in South Africa. We don't know where that's going to go. But the global picture, right? There's obviously been murmurs of what Sanzar did and how the, the, the shape of super rugby has changed. The global picture of rugby is changing. Are you for going to the north? And if so, why? If not, why not? Yeah, you know, I don't see the North, um, I don't see the North becoming, I know that we're in global season, I don't see them becoming a summer sport. I think there's too much tradition. They're very really old fuddy daddies in the UK, not quite like soccer. <laughs> People got tattoos and earrings and things like that, you know. They, in rugby, they wear barber jackets and, and uh, they're the old Burberry wearers, not the new <laughs> Burberry wearers. So, uh, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, they, I do. Um, I, I, so I'm not sure, and we can't really play through, you know, the, it's, it's a failed experiment in Pro 14, us playing through some, you know, Cheetahs playing on Boxing Day or that sort of stuff. But I'm not sure about, I, I, I've got another formula which I think will work, but I think the pressure on Super Rugby is absolutely enormous now. You know, we could just look at the, you don't have to be um, any form of economist or uh, just to look at, I will tell you from Newlands, you know, we were maybe 40,000, a Super Rugby game uh, 10 years ago. You could see any stadium, uh, 10,000, you know, watch the Rebels playing in a massive stadium with three or 4,000 people. Um, we all remember the Super 12 of the, uh, the early noughties where, you know, Super 12, 11 teams played at a semi-final, final game sold out. You know, it was just, uh, it was a phenomenal product. And now to see Loftus, uh, you know, last year with a crowd of three or 4,000 for a Stormers game, it's just, it shows you the product is absolutely broken. 
how much um, the fact that we can't, the Springboks play the All Blacks and we have to move it to Albany because we won't fill uh, Eden Park. Uh, that's also crazy. So um, the, I, the Northern Hemisphere, on the other hand, is booming. You know, they got this money from CVC, the guys who own Formula One. Uh, they've invented in Pro 14. They're in the Premiership. Your Six Nations, you'll fill out every game forever. But where they're clever is England are only in Scotland once every two years. You know, Boylo, who was a great old Springbok from the 30s or 40s, my dad, my dad and I knew him, obviously. He said, whenever your country play, plays New Zealand, whenever, you, whenever South Africa plays New Zealand, consider your country at war. You know, we would war four or five times a year. You know, we can't even host, we won't even sell out, you know, Ellis Park anymore for an all-black test. So, um, mm. We got our products dramatically wrong here. And I, 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 I think that what we need to do is, we, I think we need to fix Super Rugby, make it simpler um, in terms of 12 teams, 11 semi-final, final. And then the key is to go to return to touring. Because we are now looking at the elite of our franchises, the four franchises, and sometimes the Cheetahs and the Kings. But can you imagine if the Lions were here or New Zealand were in South Africa for 14 games, which one included... SA students, um, the Griffins in Valcom on a Wednesday afternoon, South African Barbarians in Uppington, you'd get 15,000 people packed in, you know, it would just be, you build the character of this tours. we go to tour in New Zealand, the Lions are in Australia, you could work out a program like that. But um, the British Lions tour, everybody's absolutely amped for the Lions tour for the last four or five years, it's going to be the biggest rugby economic event outside of the World Cup, um, and for South African sports since the FIFA World Cup. And, uh, mm. and, and, uh, we could have New Zealand here every three years, not in a meanest way. If I asked you who won the rugby championship three years ago, we'd guess New Zealand. It would probably be right because it's New Zealand. But who won Super Rugby three years ago or Australia? We don't remember. I don't care. Nobody, it's meaningless at the moment. And that's yeah. why we have to get back to a less is more concept, get real big touring, get rid of this meaningless uh, uh, rugby game. So if, if you had a, a hybrid, I'm going on too long. So if we went no, to the Northern go. Hemisphere at the end of every year and played, in, not every year, every third year, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, the great old Grand Slam tours. Because I don't care, these tours at the end of the year where you play Italy and Padua, Wales and Cardiff, and then Ireland, or the Barbars outside of the test window with a sun guy from Borland making his debut. It's not, it's not, um, it's not what a, either go play France no for cares. three tests. Go and play France for three tests in France. Get cheated and tough and play against French students over a referee who cheats you and just make the thing. Or go and play England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, or stay at home and rest. So the Springbok brand grows and we can't wait. You know, th at the moment, we can't wait for them to play again. We're the world champions. We want to play. I guarantee if we got on, we played some meaningless rugby between now and then, there wouldn't be the same feeling. So it's not about, to me, the standard of a rugby or whether we're north or south. It's just the product of the competition. And, you know, a strong ah. curry cup, a shorter super rugby and proper tours. And we will be, you'll see a different world automatically. So, Coach, you've dedicated your whole life to rugby. So let me, as somebody who's never dedicated their life to rugby at all, tell you how we fix this thing, right? Okay. Here's how we do it. I've always thought this. is We've got the business model. The NFL and the EPL are the business model. Make your local league strong. So, so just for a second, I've always said, forget about international sport because I've always said to people, Every sport where international sport is the pinnacle is the most amateur. And you can go through all of them, right? If you go to football, club, club is the best. If you go to NFL, the clubs are the best. You go to the NBA. The, so forget about international sport. That'll take care of itself. It's, it's why cricket and rugby are falling behind. They're so obsessed with people that play the least. What you do is forget about the national stuff. Make your local leagues a song. So we should be focused on the Curry Cup should be the strongest tournament in the world. 100%. Right? So then international, the international naturally will, will be strong, right? So stop focusing on New Zealand. I, don't, I actually don't care about them. And if we're going to have a, a, a trans-Tasman tournament, is two of our teams from Super Rugby, the two best from New okay. Zealand, the two best from Australia, play in a Champions League style. But the, focus is, lo the focus is local always. We, we make sure that... Uh, Bonambi doesn't want to leave in two years. He retires here. So that, yeah. you know, you look at what a tragedy it was for the New England Patriots, if you don't follow the... the, the yeah, 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 yeah. Tom, Tom Brady leaving was a disaster. You need your heroes to be here so people will pay that extra hundred bucks to come and, and make it their team. Right now, I don't want to talk against your team, but 
some most people won't feel attached to the team because some of your guys are it's it's like a revolving door right so yeah. we, we've got it completely wrong by obsessing with the spring box forget about the spring box the spring box will be fine focus on the leagues your thoughts from a guy who's never ever been an administrator in rugby <laughs> i think that's absolutely brilliant i couldn't agree with you more if the curry cup was a meaningful competition played over the whole year with the best with the spring box playing and the spring box played five or six tests You'd sell out every test, you'd sell out every Curry Cup game. The guys would play every, the Springboks would play every Curry Cup game. I literally could not agree with, I could not agree with you more. And uh, we, that, that is why we flooded it at the, at the, at the wrong level. And um, yeah, that, yeah, that's why, if, yeah, I, don't, I just I agree. Yeah, we worked very hard to keep our Springboks here. Probably got more World Cup Springboks than any other franchise. And that was because we wanted to get people, you know, like, interested it's it's tragic you know of the 33 or 32 i mean, I mean might be one out of the 33 yeah. uh, springboks who played in the world cup 11 are in south africa that that takes us if if i was to extend your argument about being fo focused in the wrong way we will end up being fiji in terms of being a net exporter of players you know what i mean and then there's no domestic rugby market and the kids stop playing and it's old mother hubbard you are completely i think it's a very good idea I think I think I'm right. I, it's true. Yeah. It's true. I think I'm right, and I, I think um, I should be paid millions of rands to fix everything. Uh, Coach, let's move it forward a bit. Your your father, uh, Paul Dobson, is one of the greatest legends, and um, what he is is he's an oracle of rugby because he's been watching it since uh, Lord knows when. Uh, you know, when he's around us, you know, this is a legendary figure. What is it that he feels about the current state of rugby, what he saw in the past? Is rugby getting better in his mind? Is it getting tougher? What, is he, what does he say about the current state of rugby? Because I'm actually not too sure where rugby is right now as a product, as a game. I think, um, you know, he, look, he, I always roll my eyes and think uh, it's, he's too old-fashioned. But we has got it right. There were lots of old values in the amateur thing, which is the way forward, uh, which is the way forward for rugby. Um, because... You know, like I've coached professional teams, we won trophies. We've never had a reunion or the guys just drift off in their own, you know, whereas when mm -hmm. I coached UCT, we beat Salimbosch in 2004. The guys have a five-year reunion, a 10-year. The guys bribed together. It was, it, you know, it, um, those guys who, I know you can UCT, they won Intervarsity in 1976, Nick Mallett, him of the really, really big head. His, uh, his, his team... Um, they get together also, you know, every 10 years, 50, they have a reunion and get together and have a laugh. And the amateur guys played for each other. You know, I know they weren't conditioned. I know they had day jobs, but they really did play for each other. And the stories and the, there was just a different sort of camaraderie. And that's why I think by us becoming so vanilla, I think he's just, you know, just playing games for the sake of it. On fact, because I've sold something to a broadcaster uh, is, 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 is sad. My dad thinks, you know, we've, we've lost this sort of soul. He would think with professionalism, I, I, we'd have to be professional now, but how we yeah. structure the competitions and that, I mean, UK football, I don't think would have changed. Like you say, let's say Huddersfield uh, wouldn't have changed as much in the last 30 years as say, for example, Western province have, you know, in terms of yeah. those guys probably played with the same passion as they do now, even if they've got a few guys from Spain. So I think a lot of old, to me, the, the future of rugby is actually in the past, and that might sound completely axiomatic or idiosyncrasy. Um, mm. The future is in the past, less rugby, more meaning to it. You know, uh, the touring, like I said, like you said, the strong domestic competition, that is the yeah. future of rugby. If we carry on like this, surely some guy with a, with a goatee and earring sitting at Sky, I think I'm writing a check for 500 million pounds a year for super rugby, sees Rebels play against the force in front of 500 people in a ice cream seller, he's going to say, I'm stopping that. Do you know what I mean? How do you feel place? Yeah, of course. You can't buy a seat, you know, so. Yeah, get the product right. Hey, coach, I just wanted to ask you, what's it like to be uh, the second most famous Dobson? Just, I mean, I, I hate to bring this up. Is it, does that hurt your feelings or how, how do you deal with that? Did you cry into the pillow uh, by yourself at night? No, I drink, drink, and I drink when he's not ah. looking. But... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, coach, Sold I appreciate everything. that this, this has been an incredible conversation and talk me through before I let you go. And I appreciate you giving me this much time is what is the plan for the Stormers over the next two years? Are you looking to develop from within or are you looking to acquire the best talent? Cause I've, we've just seen what you've done at 15. Maybe you want to yeah. tell us about, are, are, are you excited about getting that young man? And you can tell us who that is at 15 from the Bulls. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled about that, about Warwick, uh, Warwick Gelant. Uh, he's not a drinker. 
it's a, honestly, it's a sort of first, it's a, that's a sort of entry interview, you know, do you drink? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, it's because it, it, it's, it's cause it, it's cause his dad's not more famous than him. But anyway, sorry, car sorry, carry on. <laughs> I interrupted you. Touché. Please carry on. Touché. Um, no, listen, he, he, we did all our research on, on, on Warwick, um, you know, what a professional is, how much he trains, we've seen what his potential is. Um, and I checked with Damien Willemser because, you know, we had looked at moving Damien to fullback, a lot of pressure on him, Flaff, and his national team is obviously at fullback. And I phoned him and the name that might compete for fullback, he's the, I said, do we bring Warwick? And he said, you've got to get Warwick. And I spoke to Sia and said, you've got to get Warwick, great team guy. And that's the first, if you, got, if, you got, if you had Sia or somebody who knows him well, like Herschel, saying, you know, you know, it's going to disrupt. Like they said, just please get Warwick. And, I, and Damon then said, hey, he'll stick at fly half. Look, I think Damon Willemse is, a, is completely, there's a staggering over emotional reaction to, to a really, really talented rugby player. The kid's just turned 22. He's, I haven't seen a guy with his physicality, competitiveness, knowledge of rugby. I can go on for Damon Willemse for years. All right, because yeah, hold on, let's talk about him. Yeah, Sorry, good. coach, let's talk about him because I'm glad you brought him up. What n Number one, what is his best position, right? So, so you're his coach. Where is he going to play? Because everyone at home is like, yeah, I played 15, 10. What, what are they doing? They're, they're going to turn him into Ruan Pina, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what is his best position? And tell me, what is the plan with him? Because I, I see raw talent, but we, we are on the outside. We're like, what is happening there? Yeah, I think, as I said, I, got, I thought there was some over, emotional overreaction because he doesn't. He missed a few penalties. He didn't kick enough on the penalties for touch. And I think he dropped two balls uh, in Super Rugby this year. And people, I know he's a terrible fly off. I think 10 and 15 is only interchangeable now. Uh, you know, you watch that Springboks game against the All Blacks when we lost in the opening game of the World Cup. I think uh, uh, Le, at, uh, Billy LaRue was at, at fly half uh, four, only four times less than Pollard was, you know. So, um, a first receiver. So they're very interchangeable. But I, I think Damon's, a, we see him as a 10. I think he's going to be one of the great flavs. Um, and we're judging a guy who's 22, uh, just turned 22. Um, he's amazingly physical. He, uh, he's got incredible step, as you know, he can pass. We have to coach him, that's the thing, into game management. And that's not something that comes easily. We're giving him too many options at the moment. We haven't given him spend enough time on his basic game management. And of course, the national team he's been playing at, at fullback. Uh, um, and so he doesn't mind and he'll do anything for the team. But let me tell you a really silly story, which may not be that silly if you think about it. We took a Curry Cup team there in 20, uh, to Kimberley, where everybody wants to go in, in 2018. And um, I took them on the morning of the game, or the morning before the game, I took them to that museum, you know, the mine museum with the Khrushchev and that sort of thing. And there's a nice sort of pseudo mining village outside, and the guys could have a coffee and walk around. and. I think it was another 80 rand to go into the actual hole, you know, to go into that little, that little rep platform that goes over the hole. And most of the guys, being rugby players, said, no, they'll go for a coffee rather. And the only guy in that group was who, who bought the 80 rand ticket to go and see the hole and see where the miners had died, you know, the, uh, it was, was Damien Willemse. And he was reading a book on Adolf Hitler, which was about this thick, you know, and he was, I say, well, he, can't be, he must have been maybe 19 years old. And I just thought, oh, oh, and this guy knows every detail, yeah. And then it might sound silly, but there is a lot there and it's our job actually to coach him because you can't say he's not big enough. You can't say he's not fast enough. You can't say he can't step. You can't say he's not skilled. The thing we just have to teach him is game management and show him some belief. And that's our plan for him. And that's why when Warwick was available, to me, it was just an absolute no brainer. We might pay a bit of rent in it for a little while, but we haven't got uh, Mornay staying as a metronomic kicker there. Uh, but I promise you the returns are going to be spectacular. Oh, that is fabulous to hear. Like, not enough coaches do what you just did, right? And I, I love what you just said is not enough coaches take responsibility and say, I have to coach this guy. Because I've always said rugby is a coaching sport. Yeah. Football is a talent sport. I, my game's football. Rugby is a coaching sport. It's a highly technical thing. And what I love about uh, what you've just said, um, sorry about Willem, sir, is that he's smart because number 10s need to be able to take lots of information yeah. on. They need, yeah. to, they need to see the whole field. And that is phenomenal, Coach. I cannot wait. Coach, before I let you go, we've got some social media and uh, people have questions for you. So, Dave, what we got for the coach? Mark LaRue says, John, are you stressed with losing players to the Bulls? How are you counteracting it? Hey, Patrice Mutsepe and Johan Rupert. Those guys could buy like eight countries together. Are you, are, are, are you, wow. 
That's a great question, Mark Leroux. How are you feeling about the Bulls basically having uh, the GDP of America as a budget? Yeah, um, no, that is, it's, 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 they're a bit wealthier than us. Uh, luckily, there's a salary cap, and hopefully it's properly enforced in South African rugby. Um, the players, you know, there's, you know the, the, maybe you're referring to Gio uh, Aplon. He was coming from Japan and 37 years old. I, 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 there was no ways we could sign a 37 year old um, in, in, in the West, in, 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 in Cape Town, you know, not when we have the options of uh, Holland or da playing a Damien Willems at fullback. And uh, Nizam Carr coming back from Wasps. Again, you know, we, we, you've talked earlier on the show about Chucky or Christus. Now, what do I say to Chucky when I sign Nizam Carr from Wasps uh, on a big money as a number eight? And I say, Chucky, you know, you, we told you when you're 21, you're the world player of the year, under 20, you're the future. But hang on, we're bringing back a Springbok. So uh, we did lose a couple, uh, Mark, we did lose two good youngsters in Skalk Erasmus and Dave Creel. But then, you know, if I bring Warwick, if we bring Warwick Chalant in, you know, I'm, you know, I'm saying, and he's a youngster, and we're backing him to be the future. He's, he wants to be a one club man now, like Sia Kalisi. Interesting what he said about Sia. He wants to be a one club man. Warwick wants to, he's from the Cape, he wants to settle here. Then so, you know, I am blocking David Creel's pathway to a degree. So when David Creel comes to me and says, Listen, I, you know, you've signed Warwick Galant, and I'm really ambitious. I can't, I don't think we ever want to get to the stage where I'm going to keep somebody because he's got a signed contract. You know, Skalka Rasmus, the hooker who's going to the Bulls now, was still under contract with us, but he wanted to go. He's got an opportunity there, and that's where he wants to be. You know, you don't want a guy in your change room who's feeling like we haven't backed him or we haven't got a plan for him. And he, Skalk was time for him to go. So he goes to the Bulls with the best of luck. And I think, and I don't want to, please, I want this to come across the right way. I think it's fantastic for South African rugby if, you know, the Bulls, Stormers, Sharks, and Lions even get head to head. I don't think it's good. We have a mentality in our sport, and maybe you know more than me, maybe it's in, others in, in, in other countries or in other sports, that we sort of take joy when another one's down, you know, and um, people sort of want it. When we finally to keep Peter Step to toy, you could feel the rest of South Africa us wanting us to lose Peter Step to toy. That's not good for South African rugby. Right? You want the world player of the year playing in South Africa. You want that Bulls to have a snorting pack under a world champion coach like Jake White as a pride of the nation. And we've got to go up there and play them. That's what we want. Put 40,000 people in Loftus all painted with blue faces and and let's go for it. That's good for sports, you know. So, yeah, that's that's my argument there. I, I, you know, we, there's nobody I've really lost. We've really lost. We really wanted. Uh, you know, we're absolutely desperate for. So, the fact that we've got eight of the World Cup squad, the eleven at the moment, I think changes with when Dane and sorry, I'm going on a bit. When Dwayne and France come back, but the, just before the you know, the new season starts, there were eleven, and we've got eight of them with Warwick coming in, in, in the Western Cape, and I think that's something for us to be very proud of. Eh? Absolutely. And hey, does Bongi Bonambi have like a 12 pack? Is he the world's most ripped man? Yes, he's an angry little thing that uh, wow. he's, uh, they call him Tyson. Uh, and uh, not only for the sporting reasons, I think he's a tough, he's a tough human being. Um, yeah, no, he's a, that I wouldn't like. I played hooker. And I, if I saw Bo if I saw that thing running on against me, I'd just, no, 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 you don't want any of that. Listen, another question yeah, for you, coach, no. before I let you go. <laughs> little time out there. Question for you, John. Do any SA Super Rugby teams know what the plans are in terms of resuming rugby, says Jacques Joubert? Yeah, um, well, you, you alluded earlier Moulin, to a call we were having this evening um, with, with uh, SA Rugby. Um, you know, the problem with rugby is, unlike, you know, you can see how the Bundesliga came back so quickly, and I think it was common cause that their, their injuries we're quite, we're quite, I think, we're two or three times what they normally would be. Um, unfortunately for rugby, we need six to eight weeks. You know, the longer we go on, we, you know, we could have done the three-week thing. We could have got back within a week, uh, got to five weeks. We could have got back within two to three. Now we have to do a full preseason, which is getting towards eight weeks, you know. So, um, assuming we get the blessing, uh, you know, of the government and we stick, observe those protocols, the best is probably eight weeks. So, you probably look at just add eight weeks to where we are now. That's if we get the green light straight away, and that might be a week or two is coming. So, you know, God willing, we're on the field late August, early September, and hopefully then we go later into the year just to make sure that the broadcast and the people have got some rugby to enjoy. But I, I, I'm pretty sure just physically, you know, for no other reason of the inju than injuries, and get it, we, we won't be on the field for a couple of months, I don't think. Hey, listen, if, it gets, if the cupboard gets bare, I don't mind shaking off the old cobwebs. Pay me three million rand. That's all I ask. <laughs> Bring me down there. And I'll, I'll come visit you. Drop you. Goal. 
<laughs> Coach, one more question before I let you go. This, this has been a, a great conversation, by the way. I am so happy that John Dobson came on, the second best Dobson. Um, Mark Roo <laughs> says, the Stormers always seem to fall short come quarterfinal time. This is a great question. What has it been about the Stormers? Because I, I just want to uh, sort of put some text to that. Remember when they had like the whole Springbok team and the B team of the Springbok team and they still couldn't get it done? They had like Jacques Ferry, Brian mm, Abanis, yeah. Skulk Berger. Yeah. Well, no, we what is it final, do, do, we, do you think? Yeah, we, we played the final in 2010 and since then Mark's right. You know, we've, 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 given, we've given it up in big games and often those games have been at home. Um, you know, we haven't got a great record for a franchise. You know, we're the best supported franchise in Super Rugby across the whole of the tournament. And uh, we've had some stellar teams. Um, I, I think, yeah, I'll give you one example. Where there's a thing, you know, we played the Bulls a couple of years ago, a few years ago, and um, it was in a league game and Newland was packed. And then we charged, I must be careful, I don't get fired like Nick Mullet was, 300 something rand for a ticket. And the guys ran on against the Chiefs in the quarterfinal and the stadium was half full because I think it was 350 rand ticket just before payday. And uh, people were waiting for us to, they said, okay, well, they'd rather not spend in a quarterfinal, they'll spend the money on the semi final. Of course, there wasn't one. And so, um, oh. you know, we, we, when Sam Kane said, when he ran out to Newlands and saw the stadium was half empty, he thought, okay, well, their own people don't even back them, and they, we've got a chance here. Um, we haven't got a good record um, in the playoffs, you know, and, uh, you know, we can go into various sports from various. NBA, NFL, the pro tier franchise as to why that's the case. You know, the problem, the thing is now that we've, we, we've done, we've built a new team uh, um, over the last year and we've kept a team that can play together in 2020, hopefully, and definitely 2021. Got the national captain, the world player of the year. Now it's up to us, you know, if we then mess it up again at a quarterfinal stage and there's something inherently wrong, but we've got to take this opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, out, out of Bishops, the coaching factory, they had Mallet, now they've got Dobson coming out. It has been an absolute pleasure. Hey, coach, I can't wait to have you on again because there's so much more ground that I feel we could cover. But I, I'd love to have you on again. And if you, if you want to have that Rassi Erasmus guy, we can have a three-way chat and maybe we can all fix rugby together. Because I listen, I know he's won a World Cup, but as you heard, I really know what I'm talking about. You think that Rassi guy knows what he's doing. Let me tell you something. I'm going to fix everything. So get Rusty next time. We all sit together and we fix, the, fix this rugby thing for everybody. Coach, you are unbelievable. You're doing an incredible job. The Stormers were looking probably the best they've been since 2010. I, and I'm being dead honest, and I'm a Lions fan. This is the best you've been since 2010. So I want to wish you all the best, and I cannot wait to have you back on to chat more rugby and, and whatever we want to talk about. So I, I, just, I cannot wait to have you on, and I'm so appreciative of your time. Thank you so much, Coach. No, thanks for a great chat. I really, really, really enjoyed it. It's a great level of debate. Thanks very much. Uh. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a call tomorrow just to um, let you know what other stuff you can do with your sort of uh, seven, eight, and six combination. But that's, that, that's for tomorrow. Thanks. For, thanks. For, thanks for, I'll see you for a cocktail. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Dobson. Thanks for this.